Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jennifer Roof. I am a research technician at uh, the CHOP Penn Proteomics Corps um, at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the University of Pennsylvania. Um, today, I will be talking about our experience as a core facility with the Coveris R230 specifically and the AFA ultrasonication technology um, and the advantages that it brings to our sample preparation workflow. So, I am, most of you are likely familiar with proteomics, but just in case, I want to give a brief overview of our workflow um, and then kind of talk about what we do as a core facility, which makes the AFA technology so helpful. Um, our core specializes in bottom-up proteomics, which means that the workflow looks something like this. Um, we take a cell um, or a cell culture or a tissue, um, and we digest, or we extract all of the proteins. We digest them into peptides. The peptides go through our LCMS systems, um, and then they go on to analysis. And as a core facility, we aid researchers in various departments through CHOP and PEN, and we work with them through every step of the process as we process their samples, from experimental design to method development sample prep, and data analysis, so all the way through. And because we work with such a variety of clients, we really run the gamut of sample types. Um, and because of these different sample types, we really need a robust way to extract those proteins. So I'm going to be focusing on this first aspect of our workflow here. So here's an example of all of the different sample types we might get. Um, we have worked with FFPE, we've worked with um, extracellular matrix, we have worked with cells, tissues, various biofluids, including plasma, urine, um, CSF. We have also worked with a variety of species, mouse, monkey, human, um, and parasites as well. So you can imagine that it is difficult to find a way to completely and reproducibly extract proteins from every sample type on this list. Um, so with all of this variation here, how do we accomplish this? It can really feel like a game of twister. There are so many variables. Which buffer is best? How many samples are there? What is the volume? Um, and with that, there are different requirements for buffer types and different requirements for low inputs and high inputs. So in this space, um, we really find that flexibility and efficiency are key. Um, and with that comes reproducibility as well, because we want to make sure that all of our data is reproducible. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on these three tenets here for the rest of the talk. Reproducibly, re reproducibility, flexibility, and efficiency. Um, and here I will introduce the Coveris R230. You've already gotten a little bit of an introduction as to the AFA technology. Um, but I want to highlight how the R230 helps with all three of these different tenets. Um, so first off, with efficiency, we want to make sure, again, we get complete protein extraction, especially from tough samples. Um, we also want improved homogenization of the samples as well. We are excited that it provides DNA shearing for us. We don't have to use benzenase. Um, and the methods are very fast. It takes under 10 minutes per column, definitely, to um, process an entire 96 well plate. In terms of flexibility, um, the R230 also offers some low and high temperature functionality. It's a water bath. Um, you can completely optimize all of the different settings for your sample types, for your buffers, and it is compatible with a lot of our downstream workflows because you can do it right in a 96 well plate. And for reproducibility, again, 96 well plate format allows for higher throughput, it's reduced hands-on time, and it's compatible with different automation platforms. So now I'm going to show you some of the data that we've gotten, um, highlighting the efficiency of the protein extraction from the R230. So this is one of our standard protein plant methods. We do a Kumasi stain. Um, it's at Angel Bradford. 
And you can see here, I did this on, um, on Cryptosporidium parvum oocysts, as well as just standard splenocytes. So the oocysts are a very tough sample type. They're a parasite. Um, they cause gastrointestinal issues. And we had a client come to us with these oocysts. They're really, really tough samples, hard to break open. Um, but you can see here that before processing and after processing, we really got better protein extraction with the R230. Um, and you can see that for different amounts of the splenocytes as well. There's, it's a lot darker after. Um, and we were able to reproduce this. We did this again with the oocysts as well, with numbers, replicates of 5 million and 1 million. Um, and you can see that the extraction after processing in the R230 was significantly better than before processing in the R230. Um, and to highlight some of our MS data, um, you can see that this is a reproducible extraction as well. Across all of our samples here, we had very similar intensities and we also had a good amount of protein ID overlap. Um, there were 1,929 proteins identified across all 15 samples um, and 2,000 proteins identified total. So most of them were identified in all 15 samples, very reproducible. Um, one thing we also like is the ability of the R230 to do bead homogenization, and that was particularly helpful in our SP3 workflows, working with magnetic beads. Um, we find that it can be difficult to completely homogenize those beads in the wells. Um, they often stick to the bottom or stick to the sides, uh, and c simple water bath sonication doesn't always help. But Sonication in the R230, as you can see here, these wells in green were processed with the R230. There's definitely visible, much better homogenization, which makes us feel a lot better about making sure that we completely washed our beads and that the enzyme for digest can get to all of the different proteins. Um, and that is seen in our data as well. We did an experiment where, uh, as you saw, we homogenized the beads um, in half of the wells, and in half of the wells we did not. And you can see that increase in our precursor IDs and in our protein IDs with R230 processing versus uh, in gray water bath sonication. And you can also see that um, in the reproducibility of this as well. Our coefficient of variations were lower with the R230 sonication than without, even at the low cell inputs. Um, we also have worked with the FFPE workflow um, and have found that this is a, an amazing picture, but that the R230 is great at um, homogenizing for FFPE. Um, there was a great talk about that yesterday. Um, and I want to highlight on our AFA settings just the speed of this. It's very quick. Um, total processing time per column can range. Usually, we do a DNA pulse and then five minutes of processing time. So for a whole plate, um, that would be about half an hour-ish. It's not too bad at all. Um, and it's really, really effective. So um, in terms of flexibility, there's also the temperature control that we can work with. Um, so when we're working with different buffers for different sample types, there are some temperature considerations. Um, the water bath goes from 5 degrees to 40 degrees. So we can uh, do some of our methods at 10 degrees if we're using urea, for example, to reduce carbamylation. Um, and we can do them at room temperature. Um, and then it also goes up to 37 degrees, uh, which I know that some people have used for in-unit digestion. Um, one caveat that we did run into um, that was a little bit unique and uh, more of a learn from my mistakes type of deal um, <laughs> is that when we were sonicating with SDS, 
um, when we sonicated at low temperatures. We expected some precipitation, um, but what we did not expect was that some of the SDS actually, um, you can see it, it polymerized on the walls of the tubes. And uh, we noted later that there are some studies that have shown that uh, ultrasonication causes polymerization. Um, but just as a warning, don't sonicate SDS at, <laughs> at 10 degrees because it was impossible to get out of the wells. <laughs> Um, flexibility, uh, also to highlight optimizable settings. So as I said, we're a core facility. We have lots of different samples, lots of different buffers. So each setting can be completely optimized. If you have time to do so, um, you can go through and change the duty factor, the cycles per burst, all of the different parameters. It's completely customizable. And again, in terms of re reproducibility, the R230 we found helps us with workflows for with fewer sample transfers, so we get less loss, um, less pipetting error. Um, it allows workflows with fewer separate tools, so there's less error uh, uh, introduced there, batch to batch variability. Um, and then it also is compatible with automation and semi-automation. So to highlight some of the tools that we have not necessarily replaced, but um, that the R230 is compatible with, um, as in our sample prep toolbox, we have a lot of different things that we use, a lot of different digestion and cleanup methods in solution, IST, S-trap, SP3, EvoTips, um, different temperature control solutions, thermomixers, incubators, water baths, and different homogenization solutions for tissues, et cetera. Um, the R230 um, can almost, it, these are some of the functions of the R230. I won't say that they can replace these other tools completely, but um, it is able to have temperature control. So um, you don't need to use thermomixer as much unless you need to go to like really high temperatures. Um, incubators and water baths, like I said, you can do digestion right in plate. And then especially, um, Samir highlighted some of the differences with the probe sonicator and the water bath sonicator, um, especially in a 96 well format, you don't want to be trying to probe sonicate. And a water bath sonicator is, is very general. We also have direct plate compatibility with some of these other options. Um, so obviously you can do an in-solution digest directly in plate. It's compatible with SP3 as well, um, especially if you want to do uh, automa automation. Um, and then we also found that it's compatible with the Premix Beatbox um, if you want to homogenize your samples before putting them in the R230. Um, although we have heard that people have had success just putting tissue directly into the R230 and sonicating at really high settings. And then there's also the easy transfer factor of it's in a 96 well plate, so you can go right into an IST setup, right into an S trap, or right into Evo tips as well. And decreasing the number of tools that you're using, decreasing the number of sample transfers is really helpful for reproducibility and lowering that batch to batch variability. Um, and while I did harp on the flexibility of it, as a core facility, we don't actually have the time to optimize for every sample type. Um, so the reproducibility of it is really helpful and the effectiveness of it at standard levels is very helpful as well. Um, it consistently and reproducibly extracts um, with standard methods. So we don't necessarily have to change much between sample types. Um, but it still does provide, if we run into a very difficult sample type, that ability for optimization. And since adopting the system for regular use, we have used it on a variety of sample types, including T cells, um, ECM, neurons, mouse liver and brain tissue, um, some heart tissue, et cetera. And I just want to highlight that reproducibility again of that um, oocyst extraction. 
Um, I didn't even, I'm running out of time, but I didn't even talk about some of the other features such as DNA shearing, which we really like. Again, there's no need for benzenase. Um, it reduces the viscosity of samples if you're pipetting, if, if you need to do any transfer at all, um, and just avoiding contamination. Um, it's pretty easy maintenance. It's just a water bath, so we empty it out, refill it once a month with a bleach alternative, um, and then fill it back up with just regular DI water. It's got automa automatic sanitation cycles, so no worries about that. It's a small benchtop footprint, and again, it is automation compatible, which we're excited about, but we haven't necessarily gotten to quite yet. Um, so that is how the R230 has helped us in our sample prep endeavors. Um, I have a brief slide here on some of our AFA settings. If anybody is interested, I am happy to share that with you. We have a couple of different standard settings that we use, um, as well as protocols for different sample types, just in brief, um, for cell lysis, urea, difficult samples, low volumes, and FFP. And with that, I would like to thank um, the members of my core facility, uh, Lynn and Hossein, as well as Hua, as well as the Covaris team who have helped immensely um, getting everything set up, um, Samir and Tom and Alex and Deb. So thank you.